Okay, so our second concert, we're going backwards in time a little bit from yesterday, which is 14th century to the 13th century. And our little running theme is about, the, um, about minstrels. Um, and of course, I'm sure many of you have had the experience of being invited to be, you know, to do a, a, a gig, then they ask you to be a wandering minstrel. And what they mean by a wandering minstrel is they expect you to walk around and play at the same time. Um, and this is not what a wandering minstrel was. In fact, the phrase probably didn't even come till the 19th century. But yeah, so minstrels, um, they, they were entertainers, but they were specifically musicians. They weren't, you know, just general storyteller jugglers, you know, acrobats, etc. Um, but it was kind of a more professional musical position. But at the same time, they were expected to have a lot of different skills, um, including playing multiple instruments and being able to adapt songs um, or tunes through their instruments. So that's really what we're going to illustrate today. We're going to be playing um, lots of instrumental music, all of which was originally songs, um, but arranged for instruments. And there is a playlist on the website from the... From the um, online music in the dales website you can click and you'll find a list but we will explain what we're doing as we go along to some extent i hope okay so let's maybe launch into our first first pair of tunes and then i'll tell you what they are afterwards <laughs>
were two tunes that we chose because um, both of them are found in multiple versions in different manuscripts. The first one is Verbum Patris, which can be found um, in places including the Scruston Breviary, which is in Glasgow Cathedral. Um, but the version we did actually comes from the Codex Las Huelgas <laughs> um, in Spain. Um, and then the second piece we did is a, a motet, some of you may have recognized, and it also occurs in several places. The bottom line of that motet is the chant plus videos, is yes. right? Yes. Um, but then the upper lines are actually written, there's, there's a Latin song, there's song in French, um, there's multiple lines with different words, and some versions are two lines, some are three, and the version we just played is a four-line version that comes from the Montpellier Codex. Codex Montpellier, what did I do wrong? Go on. Oh, okay, good. Uh, <laughs> so, um, the next piece we're going to do, again, you might recognize the tune to start with. It was one that occurred in a lot of places, including in the Carmina Burana. Uh, there's a troubadour song with this tune, but the version we are going to play comes from St. Andrews, uh, the St. Andrews music book, which Bill Taylor mentioned yesterday, this fantastic source of Notre Dame style music uh, that seems to have been in the monastery at St. Andrews. So, let's play. <laughs>
one of the sources of information we have about medieval minstrels comes actually from sermons, which, as you might imagine, are maybe not too keen on the minstrels. Um, so some of them actually say that instrumental music is a worthless luxury um, or indeed incites indecency. It's as sinful as gambling or drinking. Um, so we thought we could bring those all together if you imagine yourself in the tavern at Castle Bolton and we'll have some instrumental music. You can have a, have a drink and maybe a gamble. Um, and we play another tune that is again from the St. Andrew's um, music book. So originally a religious piece, but it actually is a cracking tune in a carol structure that we think would go down very well in a tavern. <laughs> about minstrels of course is payment records and this these often suggest that a minstrel could have quite a high status in a household so for example there's a person called John who is the lute player for King Edward the first of England um, and he's paid he's in you can see him in the accounts from 1285 onwards he gets paid a regular wage he gets a new outfit every summer and winter He's made exempt from paying any taxes. Uh, what else? Then he's given a horse so that he can travel with the king and he's given two servants to carry his instruments. So suggests he had more than one instrument, maybe two, not just a regular lute, but also a, something like a gittern, a small, I shouldn't call it a small lute, I'll get in trouble. No. Um, <laughs> or a gittern or, or other instruments as well. Um, so we're going to go back to the Codex Montpellier and um, play again a multi-part piece. Um, this one, the tenor is not a chant, but it's actually a carole. So again, this kind of uh, call and response structure. But then this time... Dance song. A dance song, yes, I guess we could say that. Um, but this time the lines above, unlike the previous one, um, are through composed so that they go kind of against the, the structure of the carole. So it's a very pretty piece. It's called Lee Savoir and a couple of other things because it's three, three yeah. sets of words. Okay.
And now we're going to go back to the Codex Huergus for another piece that is in four parts, uh, but we're going to build it up bit by bit. So the, the minstrel who wanders from castle to castle um, has more of a basis in reality. Many were peripatetic musicians who moved from court to court, often conveying news as well as providing the entertainment. Uh, these roles might be mixed by performing songs rela related to topical events. One musical collection from the early 14th century, the Roman de Favelle, shows that this could take the form of a biting satire. It tells the allegorical tale of a horse that rises from the humble position in the stables through avarice and corruption to a high place in government, which he abuses to the benefit of his cronies vanity, greed, and pride. But it also contains some beautiful love songs uh, in which Favel laments his rejection by Dame Fortune.
fantastic source of music. If you haven't looked at the Roman de Corval, please do. Uh, this time in uh, 1321, the first minstrels guild in Paris is formed. In addition to confirming their professional status, the statutes also provide interesting insights into their professional life. For example, from the 37 signatories of the original charter, eight are women. The minstrel statutes forbids players to leave an event before it's finished or to contract multiple events on the same day or to send a substitute or to turn up at a feast or wedding on spec offering to, pay, uh, to play or to interfere when a potential client is conversing with another member of the guild. So we have another piece from the Roman de Corval, but we just need to tune a little bit. However, some illicit associations remain for minstrels. In Marseille, minstrels are prohibited from singing at night with or without instruments. Particularly at Chiavari, um, a tradition described in the Roman, Roman de Favelle, when musicians would be hired to make noise outside the windows of a newlywed couple. One account describes an occasion when the friends of the bride cut the strings of the harpist who was performing in the street. This resulted in a general brawl.
wonderful bubble <coughs> row hearts, so I'm having to do a little bit of retuning for different modes, but I think they're ready to go. going to go back to some of the other sources we used before um, and we actually in some of the later sermons in this period we see a, a softening of the view of the sinfulness of the minstrel and instrumental music and indeed we we hear that um, you know instrument players are necessary so that sadness and boredom can be relieved and devotion not wantonness arise uh, so we're going to do another piece from the St. Andrew's music book and follow that with a sequence, thank you Leah, a sequence um, from the Codex Las Huelgas.
very much. Um, we're now on to our last piece, and I guess we probably should briefly just say what the instruments are because people always want to know. Um, so I was just playing a six hole pipe whistle from Philip Bolton. I'm just going to get it wrong. No, I'm sure he, if he's someone. watching, he can let, him, let us know. Uh, very nice. And otherwise, I've obviously been playing a harp, uh, uh, Ardival harp. Um, this is a kitten. Probably recognize it from a bit earlier that Pepe was playing. And it's really what you can do with <laughs> Anyway, and um, this is a sitol I found lying around the house. <laughs> <laughs> he made it himself. This is a Turkish laughter playing with all of the medieval lute. And uh, my recorders are uh, an alto in F by Publicek and a soprano in C by Tim Cranmer. And this is a medieval viol um, made by Benjamin Margotten. Okay, and, and to finish off, um, we have one more piece from Das Werkes, one of our favourites. Um, and we'll just mention um, the last you know, source of information we have about minstrels is, is what they were paid. You know, they turned up, they did their minstrel C, and then they got paid, um, sometimes with horses, with armour, clothes, cups, new instruments, venison, timber, and property. So we'll see. Donations see what we get. are welcome. Yeah, <laughs> donations welcome. All right, so for our final piece. to retune the F sharp. <laughs> but luckily it's early in the piece, so.
much. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, you four as well.